All right, let's go to Lenny. Looks like you can smoke it too, like, <laughs> like a uh, mic vape. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, what is going on? Respect the dance for raveradio.com. Clover, we are here. And we are interviewing the great, the fucking great pioneer legend of hardcore techno and techno in general from the east coast rave scene welcome lenny d you are a pioneer of the u.s based hardcore techno scene as well as the founder of industrial shrink records which is to this day a leading force of hardcore techno in the entire world what's your take on the polarity of yesterday's hardcore and today's hardcore or techno in general what do you mean a pickle? Uh, I think the hardcore and the sounds the of, of the past are basically made with a lot more feeling and a lot less production kind of thing because it was bedroom music. So, I mean, not that it sounded bad, but it was, yeah, and it was something new. So, there's, you know, you couldn't really feed off of other sounds because they, they just weren't there yet. Drum and bass, all that started at the same time, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lenny. Lenny, the god of hardcore. How do you feel about the reactions of the U.S. crowd versus the Euro crowd to your sets? Ooh, that's uh, another hard one. Uh, <laughs> well, I like playing in America, but I mm. also love playing in Europe, too. It depends on, the, like Malcolm was saying earlier, what country it is, if it's a little different. You know, but I'm, I'm all over. I've been everywhere, so I kind of, like, do my thing, and it, and it kind of works, which is... In both places, I like South America, that and France. That's like, oh, well, for me, uh, that's where it goes crazy. But uh, Colombia, yeah, it, it's you know everybody, every different place has their thing. Wow, I have one more question. Hey, is it safe to say that the harder, more aggressive style of techno was the dominant genre of the '90s New York City bass scene, or do you think that scenario may be a possibility for upcoming times once again? We can it go was. hard again. It, it was. definitely was. Yeah, it definitely was. I don't know much more I can say than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was. You know? It so much was. <laughs> you, you know, we had the, the techno, the hardcore. We had like, you know, even progressive uh, techno. The, you know, everybody that was DJing at that time had a different thing. And it, and it was really good. It was quite magical. Until Mayor Giuliani decided. Oh God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, when we had Dinkins, when we, when we had Dinkins in office, we were oh, fucking just going ham, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were doing it all, all of a sudden. Just... I need to sell those places to my friends. No more parties. No more water. Da, 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 da. I was like, man. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, oh, shit. Fuck you. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, can you paint us a picture of like what? the rave scene was like whenever you were starting out? Uh, it was a lot less organized <laughs> to a degree. Um, the places you were going to, it was, wasn't was a normal location. Um, <laughs> uh, Breaking you know, it, B&E. Mo money was just an afterthought, I think, at that point. Yeah, right. Um, you, you know, it was all, it was really great. People would just come out of nowhere to hear whatever the fuck they were hearing for the first time. So it was really, it was the really birth of things. For me, I'm lucky. I was the resident at the limelight. So the stuff I did in Brooklyn, I brought to Manhattan. Amazing. So that was uh, the bridging the gap across both. And then I started playing all over. And then I got tours in Europe. And then I just kind of... Went all the way around, yeah. you know. And I was in New York, but it was like I didn't have to fight for my job. So it was <laughs> I come back, you know. I have the set. Nobody was trying to tell me what to do. They all loved me. They said, "Okay, you play your fucking out, do whatever the hell you want." And and it was it was it was good. And then I just yeah, so it was all big one big thing really. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, you were also a production assistant for Arthur Baker. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and and that <laughs> was a grueling two and a half years. I was making a record every three days. Wow. Yeah. Maybe every wow. week. That's nice. Wow. And then wow. sometimes multiple okay. sessions what year going was that? on. When was that? In one that that was in the, no, even before that that was like the 90? end of the eighties. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Early, okay, early yeah. Because what happened was I was 
So that's what got Man, we were Dick, producing every, Dick everyone. We went up, <laughs> yeah. you know, it would be from Dire Straits to Al Jarreau to fucking <laughs> who the fuck, anyone that was coming through the door, New Order or whatever. So, yeah, I had my own room. My partner at the time, we just, they just hired us all the time. So we inadvertently just said, hey, let's just do this together. So, and he had his editing room. And then every time we do the music, I go in the other room on the SSL, start the track there with the engineer, then we go back and start another fucking track. And when we were done, he would be editing it, and this would be going Nose on lipping. nonstop <laughs> every day. My mother didn't even know where I was <laughs> you know, at the time. I was young. I was like 18. Yeah, yeah. Know, 18, something like that, you know? I'm sleeping on the couch. I was a permanent fixture. I was just telling you, like, I'd be sleeping in the studio, like, when they were showing clients around, they go, oh, that's Lenny. <laughs> you know, if you work at night, he's the man. <laughs> and they, a lot of them booked us to do the work, and Arthur would just give us loads of work. That was the thing. So he would, you know, do his business. We do the production. He'd always say yes, no, maybe, whatever. And then once it was approved, we edit, get all the version, start the next one, start the next one. It was just. Man, I really learned how to produce music <laughs> even better than what I was before I went in there. You know, before I was just working on, you know, with Frankie and Tommy had a nice studio, but Shakedown was fucking legendary. Like every record I've ever loved was made in that room. It was like, wow. oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I was learning how to engineer from the guys because after a while it's like, they're like, I want to go to bed. Just fucking do it. You watch me enough. I said, but I'm not sure. He goes, then fuck it up and learn. I'm going to bed. Right. You, you I'm need, checking in the morning. You need to be right. the one to do it in the morning. He goes, I've been here for 20 hours. We don't hours. need That's the way to learn. Man. And then the same guy, he's, he does. He used to do all of Rolling Stones, and he did all the David Bowie stuff afterwards. And he's sitting in the studio like this going, what the fuck? And I'm sitting behind him like, trying to get this fucking sample to work. It's like, I don't know what time it was in the morning. We were there all day. All of a sudden, he just goes like this and slips, and it has the monitor button, but we were listening low, but the thing was high. Bro, the Yori speakers blew out of the wall. Like, seriously. We went, what the fuck? Man, I got to tell you, that was bad. Really? Oh, I, I can imagine. It and you want to know what made it work? It was Christmas fucking day. Oh, Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Had to get it done. He goes, You want the job? It's Christmas Eve. And I was like, No problem. I'm there, buddy. Let's go. What time do you want me there? I've been, I've had a lot of Christmases. I can fucking miss one. You know, you know what I mean? But yeah, he blew the speakers and then I, because yeah, I used to do all the other shit in there, so I taped them up. Yeah, he's big. <laughs> You tape it up. We <laughs> had to put a big X. No, it was hanging out. So we had to push it back in. So we're all taping it. And, it's got these X's over it. and then, uh, what the fuck? and, and then, he, then I said to him, I says, do you think Arthur's going to notice anything's fucked up? No. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking gave me that look. Fuck you. He goes, he goes, as of now, I'm doing this session for free because I fucking blew the speakers. <laughs> I was like, wow. I said, that's, you know, it's handy, but what could you do? And then what did we do? We blew the, the next set of speakers. <laughs> Good job. And what I did was the stupid, it was this Yamaha NS10, that black with little things. So what I did is I took a black Sharpie and I put a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> on the speaker. On the speaker because it was blown. But I didn't realize that they just, the guy in the back just, you know, does it, he keeps, he just fixes the drivers or whatever. It wasn't fucked up, fucked up. So now we had speakers. When you, when the, the, smiley clients, faces. the clients come in and there's this one with, it looks, it's a smiley face fucking NS10. And they, you have to notice it. But we just, they left it in there. So that was a little. Shit. It was two, a happy speaker. Two, two years ago during 2020 sessions on Techno Beach, we fucking blew speakers. Yeah. In the middle of the show. And, 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 and we're on Plum Beach. Oh, you, you you know where we yeah, are, yeah, okay? Totally. During the pandemic. It's not like you can get a speaker in. Oh, well, <laughs> did. Did. You did. Oh, did. You did. Oh, <laughs> we blew fucking speakers. We sent Paulie Perez to the fucking Jews over there in Borough Park <laughs> with the speaker. They fucking fixed that motherfucker. He was and, back and in about had an it hour back and in half. fucking 45 minutes. And we kept wow. so we, rocked out, we rocked out with a bottom and one top for fucking 45 minutes. And Paulie <laughs> came back with that top. 
fixed and ready to go yeah. from yeah. the Jews wow. and Park on a Sunday wow. afternoon. Uh, I think it was late. Was it Labor Day? It was Labor Day. It was fucking oh. Labor Day. Oh. Oh. That, was, that was the second oh. time. Oh. It Oh, we couldn't get anywhere. Wait, wait, that, 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 that was the lockdown. That was the second Those time it blew. The first time was at, 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 the, at, the, at the bridge. And that services everything. Oh, it was fucking right. There was right. <laughs> no way on Christmas, Christmas Eve. And what made the session... At that time, I don't understand. And the session it's, started it's, it's really story. fucked up from the first fucking minute. <laughs> we, we're listening to it's it off like the that. tape. It's and always just constant things, shit. Things are disappearing. <laughs> So then we looked at it. I was the editor already, and I'm looking at the tape, and I'm going, "There's a fucking hole in it." <laughs> <laughs> and we got an engineer, and we need the sink. Without with that hole, nothing stays, and nobody. Sony didn't send us the the, the the. There was no one to call. So I says, "Okay, well, we got one option. It's a, it'll be do or die. I'm gonna s- s- not splice it." but we're going to put a little piece of tape and I got to make sure it does not fall one way or the other. I got to tell you, I was sitting there for fuck because it was like, oh man, am I going to get this? He's going, come on, come on, you're going to get it or what? I was like, no, 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 I'm afraid. And, and it didn't work in that I, right? I did. I fixed it. It worked? I fucking <laughs> well, fixed it. And what did we do? For the next hour, we took the tape and we spun it off on the second reel and then got rid of that tape. So that took another fuck knows that's, how that's, long that's, to do. That's one track at a time. Way before that. One track at a time. <sighs> and then once that was done. <laughs> that's re- <laughs> yeah. And it was digital, so we didn't even have another tape. We had to use an analog recorder because oh, fuck. We used the, the, the tapes weren't there. Oh, fuck. No, man. So I got crazy. two more questions for you, Lenny. But it was a, you know, legendary session for me. From start to end, we can tell. Yeah, oh, yeah. speakers with those. I was like, wow, this fucking record's gonna suck now. <laughs> you often play shows with DJs in other genres of techno. What do you think harder sounding techno fans can gain from softer styles? I don't listen to hard, crazy music every day. I mean, that would that would be fucking insane. Um, you got to have a bit of a balance between right. what you listen to. I mean, look, I could listen to Led Zeppelin one day, listen to fucking speak, or the next day right. bang out techno in my headphones no or yeah. drive my neighbor crazy. It, it, I never started with techno. Of course I started so. Shit. mobile fucking DJing, DJing disco at the Roller Palace, Playing oh, yeah. at all the roller Dude. rinks, and then I started <laughs> playing in clubs, and it, it just you know doing mobile fucking things, going up six flights of stairs with speakers <laughs> up and down. You know, I look back, it's like if you can make a sixty-five year old lady dance, he's <laughs> on drugs. Are you kidding me? You know, and I was fucking on drugs partying too. So right, you know, but but it was it was not an instantaneous thing. Um, even when I was DJing at the Roller Palace, I was still doing these other parties and stuff. And then it became, once I, because I wasn't old enough to even get in the clubs, you know, then Ralphie D, uh, he got me in to play at uh, Club B, I think it was. And that was my, my introduction into, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be 18, I can come in here. And then they changed it to fucking 21. 21, oh and no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Your luck. You know, so That's the raves luck. were really, you know, there was no, you know, there was oh, no yeah. age group, so. That's why we I did. remember sneaking That's out, going into the it. fun house, seeing Run DMC, and you know. Oh, fuck it, it wasn't a problem child, but I had problems. <laughs> <laughs> so this one might be a little controversial, I don't know, but what do you think of Candy Style, Happy Hardcore? I mean, it has its place, you know? Those kids are tripping on fucking so much shit that... Uh, I, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Really, you know? I, I I was in Rhode Island, and the whole party was like that. And I don't play that. And it wasn't super full, you know? So I would say 15 people left, you know? The rest of them, tripping balls. Going fucking bananas. You know, the music they listen to is really fast. I mean, but what you do know, you, it's how okay. Do you it has the da da da, da or the, <laughs> the, the EDM, or it has some other, you know, bootleg pop thing over the top. You know, I respect it. I mean, yeah. fuck it, they get into it. I mean, it, it, making those records ain't easy either. Is it not? You is know, you've got to have a to musicality of some degree to make those melodies and do all that. So I, I respect it as I mean, it's not my thing right. to listen to, but 
but, I've but it's to their worse. thing because of you. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's, I, it's, I it's an extension of, every, like, of yes. everything. I think like everything if, grows. If you didn't do what you did, they wouldn't know to do what they do. I'm fortunate to be on that that I was on that cusp. You know, making records really put me in a different place because like, you go to the record shop, I go to the distributor. So I don't have to go to this record shop to get his taste when everything he picks is here. <laughs> so because I made so many records, I was always invited to the distributors because Industrial Strength was mine. Then I would just buy records that, you know, Okay, let's say record shop A doesn't carry those records. Mm. So I was never, this is another reason why I was DJing like an animal. Right. Because <laughs> I knew every shop, every distributor, I made records on every one of their sub labels. <clears throat> and it was cop blanche. I just walk in and boom, 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 boom. And then That's next that. day I'm in England, boom, 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 boom. And so my record and selection that that. was in my hands. <laughs> Not, I mean, I went to record shops, for sure, but it was never the core end of what I used to play. Oh, wow. I, I was finding B sides, acid records, this, because there was no pressing, hard you know, core. White labels. It just became that because <laughs> I played everything back to back. That was it. You know, all the other Germans had the same records, but they played one track out of the set and they were all like, oh, you play all the back sides. You were playing for the second number. Yes, yeah, so I played boom on the one part. Okay. All right, so. Fantastic interview. I just okay. want to end this interview by giving a moment. <laughs> giving a, a quick moment, moment to my backside. Backside. A, a quick moment. <laughs> I just wanted to show my ass. Oh, okay. Okay. A quick, a quick moment free. to remember one of your first homegrown talents, Mickey Fingers. Today yeah. is the day he passed. Is it? That many years ago. So let's give a little silence for that. Yeah, man. I mean, he he was your guy when you he started was this. He was the team the team that really put the hardcore over right. the top, 100%. It's, a, it's, made it's definitely an emotional setting to discuss, but I the, mean, between the both of us and everyone you know, else here that knew him. It's like NWA kind of Yeah, you know, like, man, like you know, integral. The, the three of those guys were, were just brutal. You know, I miss Fucking Mickey. Fucking DOA, man. It was sad. Sad to see that day. Yes, it was. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lenny D, right. Malky. Respect the dance for RaveRadio.com at Clover. We are having a great time tonight. Just thank you so much for awesome. everything. Thank thank you guys so much for you. letting us uh, you. be with you and everything. Oh, We're yeah, so grateful. No, it's great. No, you're, it's awesome. you're a legend, Lenny, and you know awesome. it. Awesome. <laughs> well, guys, right. it's time to smoke a cigarette or something else. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>